love you too. As much as she loved her dad. And she, you were her world to her. You know, when Donnie, when her dad wasn't there, you were there. It, I just don't understand what's wrong with you, Candace, because what I see of you doing on these live streams, this is not the woman I remember. It is not, you know? So I don't know where your mind is at. I don't know what's going on with you internally, but you need to break away and finally come clean. You gotta know something, you know? Another thing, Candace, you know, you know for a fact how many times we had to go searching for Summer. <laughs> but did you forget the time that we found her behind uh, that house that she was, that we had to follow the path that we found her and she was outside with no t-shirt and no shoes with just a job of hands? Welcome to Reporter Room, where we seek truth and justice. My name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist. Today, we're going to discuss the comments Jose Romaine made on another creator's YouTube channel last night. Some of them confirm what we already suspected, while others shed new light as to what was really going on in Summer's home leading up to her disappearance on June the 15th. Everything I'm about to share with you is my opinion, and opinions are not facts, so please don't send any negativity to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Let's be kind and decent to each other. Before we go any further, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so I know you were here. The best way you can help Report a Room is to watch this video all the way through, leave a comment, and consider watching some of my other videos. You can also join and become a channel member. Jose reportedly spent months living at 110 Ben Hill Road prior to Don Wells returning from Utah. He isn't a hero and he also isn't a villain. He's a guy who looks like he partied with Candace and Grandis in front of the two younger boys in summer. The oldest boy reportedly went with Don to Utah. If you haven't watched my other video on Candace and H, you will want to see it next because it lays out some important information that you may want to consider in this case, and I will link it for you in the description below. Also, credit for Justice for All for the interview with Jose. So I cannot verify independently that Justice for All spoke with Jose Roman, but it seems like it probably was him. Jose lived, reportedly, at Ben Hill Road for a half a year, and he claims he rented a room from Candace. One of the boys would sleep with Candace, Summer, and usually Grandis, upstairs, while the younger boy, Wyatt, slept in the basement in what Candace and Dawn say is their bedroom. Jose also slept in the basement. Jose claims Dawn did not attend church while he lived there, and neither did Candace. He also made it sound like Dawn was not supporting Candace or his three other children while he and his oldest son were in Utah. Dawn was working in Utah. Or was he? When Dawn came back to Ben Hill Road months later, he got his old job back, but Jose said Dawn spent the money on alcohol and snacks rather than real food. Jose claims Don shopped at the Dollar General rather than a proper grocery store. Jose claims that the underage teen H lost his virginity to Candace Wells. This isn't a correct way to describe what happened in my opinion. H would have been 14 or maybe just turned 15 at the time, so he was a minor, and so he was not of legal age to consent. Tennessee's statutory SA law is violated when a person does this with an individual under the age of 18. There is a close in age exemption which allows teens 13 to 18 to consent to partners less than four years older. But Candace would have been in her late 30s, so if this is true, she should be indicted. Jose also gave insight into Summer's home life, and it was heartbreaking to listen to. Candace was reportedly calling Don begging for grocery money, and we learned that Allie bought Summer and her two brothers $300 in groceries. Don allegedly took a shower with Summer before Jose called him out on it, and Candace liked to pull pranks on the children with shaving cream, and one of the boys woke up crying about having shaving cream in his eyes, so it seems like things went too far. According to Jose, the children lived in filth. There were weak, old, dirty dishes in the sink, roaches, and when Don came home, they were given snacks instead of a proper meal. If you still support these parents, please tell me why. 
please explain that to me because I don't get it. We also learned that Summer had wandered off a couple of times prior to her June 15th disappearance. So why were Dawn and Candace so adamant that Summer wouldn't wander away? Jose said she did it a couple of times. We also learned that Summer loved to play games, especially hide and seek. And even more worrisome, Summer's favorite go-to hiding spot was this abandoned refrigerator in the front yard. This reminds me of footage I've seen showing Dawn hitting the refrigerator with a stick. Does Dawn's actions, do they have any significance to what happened to Summer or is he just intentionally misleading us? Jose stated that Summer disappeared for 30 minutes one time and around an hour another time. I think the saddest thing to hear about was what Dawn did to Summer's kitten. Summer had a little kitten that she loved, and according to Jose, she carried it everywhere. Don decided he didn't want it in the house and threw it to the dogs, who were also underfed. Summer had to watch as the dogs ripped her beloved kitten into pieces. This shows you who Don really is, because what kind of parent would do this to their child? What kind of person, what kind of human does this to an innocent kitten? And I don't blame the dogs because according to Jose, they were not being fed properly. Only two shovelfuls of dog food were given each day for 15 to 20 animals. Those particular dogs were reportedly removed from the property on Ben Hill Road. So the dogs that live there now are different animals. Jose also shared with us about the night Don lost his mind and got arrested. He went after Jose and Candace. Jose said Don chipped his front tooth in the altercation. He also says he helped Candace fill out the restraining order paperwork. He didn't leave that night in October of 2020. Instead, he stayed on a few days more until he realized that Don was coming home to Ben Hill Road. He says Grandis drove him to South Carolina and it was not North Carolina as originally reported. Jose appealed directly to Candace and he said to her, he asked her to remember when Summer went missing. He asked her to remember when Dawn carried her back up the driveway after she disappeared one of the times spanking her bottom. So why is Jose coming forward now? I can't answer this question. He should have come forward when Summer first went missing. He should have come forward when he first saw or heard about what happened to H. And he should have spoken with TBI right away. In, in his version of events, Jose is the hero who washes the dishes and cooks meals for the children. I don't know if this is true or not, because in the photos that I've seen, he's partying and cavorting with Allie on the boys' bunk beds. Don't get me wrong, I am glad Jose finally came forward, and I think better late than never. However, he should have spoken out sooner for H's sake. He should have spoken out sooner for Summer's sake. So is what Candace allegedly did to H the reason Allie is not friends with Candace anymore? I think that probably is the real reason. Meanwhile, Candace Bly has been sitting on YouTube literally wearing a tinfoil hat and playing with divining rods. And when people try to bring up Summer, they were allegedly blocked. I don't know if it was Candace that blocked them or someone else, but why? Why are you bl blocking people? Why are you appearing on a channel that's blocking people, Candace? So Candace, if you're listening to me, if you're watching this, please go to Sheriff Lawson or TBI today and tell them what you know about what happened to Summer on the June the 15th. It's been nine months and we all need you to stand up for this little baby girl. Dawn is in jail, so there's no excuse to not speak out about what happened the day Summer disappeared. We already know about H, and this means that law enforcement does too. So you have nothing to lose. So please speak up for Summer. Please don't put her to the side. She deserves to have someone stand up for her. Please subscribe and leave me a comment.